Silvano is convinced that this man and the Avenger are one of the same person. This is fabrication, sir, on no account. I give you this information so that if any rumors of his arrival meet your ears, you'll understand they're not to be commented on. That'll do. Is that all clear, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Sir. Well, Joe Martin. Yes, sir. Mitchell tells me you're smart enough to come in out of the rain, if you're called. Oh, that's very good of you, Mitchell. Now, Martin. Sorry, sir. I want you to concentrate on this case to the exclusion of everything else. Anything you may pick up anywhere, send it straight to the Mitchell himself. You understand? Yes, sir. Get on with it. Right. Mitchell. Thank you, sir. 
And the name? The name is Angelo. Michel Angelo. Angelo. Oh, well, that's easy to remember. You know, I'm a musician and I've painfully neglected my music lately. I'm a star again. Oh, you have a piano? Oh, that's good. I'm lucky. Everyone says it's a very good one, sir. We've been lucky to keep it. in a public call box. Ha-ha! Call box? Yes, in your district. What time, Joe? Well, it must have been just before you went off duty. Oh. What's up, baby? Nothing, I I think I must have heard it. Heard it? Heard what? A woman. Scream. Oh. Yeah, baby! Baby! You tell me what you know. Are you going to 
tell me what you know. I can't now. Oh, don't be silly. What did you hear? Come on. Come on, out with it. Let me go, Joe. What did you hear? Nothing, only... What? I had a speech from a public call box. I thought it might be some children playing. They do sometimes. What did you do? Reported it to the supervisor. Hello. Hello. Number, please, so I should think. Luggage, 4,000. Love it, 4,000. Have you got cloth ears? You do love your time on the switch. Oh, oh, I... Hello, hello. Hello, who am I? I mean, who are you? Well, come off it. Well, why couldn't you say so? Mr. Mitchell, please. Hello, hello. Is that you, Bob? Listen, April. Ah, but it's not your own. Listen, take this down, Snappy. Red Hot Avenger story. Have just seen girl who heard victim scream from public call box. Joe! Shut up! From public call... Public... From public call box. Yes? Yes? Here you are. He... You... Bunting. Oh, Bunting. Where does she live? At 12A Lytton Road, uh, with her parents, Mr. and Mrs. George Bunting. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Coming back now. Right, thanks very much. Oh, let's take some biscuits. Eat him. What is it, Mitchell? Dangerous. Dark thing developed some group of marshals, yes? It seems to be with her. I had the call box by one of the girls on his game. Good morning, tomorrow is the last day. Follow up the English report. You're on a mistake? Yes, Martin wouldn't have said that upstairs. I put it to one. By the way, you get a photograph of the silver girl? Thanks, sir. Really? You haven't touched it, sir. No, Mrs. Bunning, I don't feel very hungry this morning. These murders, is there uh, a great feeling about them? Feeling? I should seem very sir. Don't be a beast. Or to be torn to pieces, whoever he is. Beast, you call him? I should say so, sir. Think of all those innocent girls. But how do you know that he too is not innocent? But all these crimes are just for madness. The beast that is in all of us coming to the surface. How do you know that he knows what he does? Of course, we know he must be out of his mind, sir. All the more reason why he should be cut up and put out of his misery. Put out of his misery. Yes. That is what should be done. What's that? his young man. Me and Mr. Bunting are very annoyed with him at the moment. He's responsible for that. Drag him baby into it. He's got to give evidence. Evidence? Yes. Oh, Mrs. Bunting, could you tell me something? Yes, yes. When foreigners arrive in London, is there any special district that they would choose to live in? You know what there is, sir. It all depends on where they arrive. If it was Euston, there'd be the Euston Road. If it was Paddington, it might be round about here somewhere. Round about here? Oh, Mrs. Plenty, would you mind removing these uh, ladies? I'm used to bare walls, you know. Their eyes seem to follow me about. Don't they like them, sir? Not much. Oh, sorry. I thought they liked them to play up a bit. Oh, well, if you wish, sir, I thought you'd get it to the hotel. Now, I have to get away. What do you see, Miss? Nothing yet, Pablo. Now, tell me. 
When did you first realize that what you overheard might have some connection with the crime we are investigating? I reported it to the supervisor. Although I shouldn't have done it. I tell my friend who's in charge of the newspaper. Well, he telephoned his office. And that made my father very angry. Of course your father could be angry. What cause? Oh, it's always been showing what cause. How would he like to be dragged into a mix-up like this? Silence, sir. You cannot be heard. I'll be heard. What do you mean, Clara? I was saying, sir. You are out of order. Out of order? Oh, I'm just as healthy as well, this well, one. Well, 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 sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Pardon me, sir. I understood I was to speak what was in my mind. Well, what is in your mind? Nothing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Please to continue your evidence. Well, you see, we let a part. So you let a part. And what's wrong with that? You might come down to it yourself one day, you know. One more word out of you, sir, and I'll have you turned out of court. Sit down, sit down. Yeah. Well, you see, we live a farm, and my father and mother always get the house very respectable. And they were afraid if we got mixed up in a case like this, well, the lodger might have killed. Silence in court! Right. Good night. I don't think we need trouble you any further at the moment. Thank you. Lizzie! Lizzie! Go! Certainly, certainly. Let him be sworn. Uh, my majority of the evidence of the truth shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, this is the most important witness, gentlemen. Monsieur Silvano, the state criminologist of the government of Bosnia. Monsieur Silvano believes that he has established the identity of the criminal as that of a notorious homicidal maniac who escaped from the state asylum at Zagreb some months ago. I state the case, Monsieur. Well, slightly. If my deductions are correct, the Avenger is none other than Stefan Kobilic, who was responsible for a series of similar crimes in my own country. Perhaps you will be good enough to tell the jury what you know of this man. Yes, I need. Stefan Kobilic comes of respectable bourgeois, or what you call uh, middle class family. His father is the conductor of the state orchestra, and Stefan himself is a very talented musician. He married, but it caused great unhappiness to himself. His wife deserted him in a very disgraceful manner, and this apparently unhinged the poor young man's brain. Therefore, his uh, indifferent animosity against all women. Well, Not there, ma'am. I don't know why he doesn't like them. Something to do with his disliking women, I suppose. He admits himself with a bit of a sense of life. Did you come back? Yes. Don't you hear it?
I was listening. Why do you stay outside and listen? Well, I don't like to bother you. Oh, it's no bother, I assure you. Very nice to have someone to talk to. London is a very lonely place. To you were home early? Yes. I came straight home from that horrid inquest. I saw you there. What ever made you go? Oh, interesting, you know. The beginning of the chain. All the bloodhounds straining to leash. <laughs> Very amusing. Not quite so amusing to the wretched hunted creatures skulking and hiding somewhere. But where? Where? Thank you, feeling like that about it. Yes, it's foolish, isn't it? But, you know, I cannot help placing myself in the same position as he is, whoever he is. Oh, but uh, don't let's talk about things like that and think about them at all. You come here to listen to music and we talk of murder. What a silly word. The next time we will talk about less gloomy things. You know, sunshine, flowers, music perhaps. Sweet, innocent things. It would be a bit more cheerful, wouldn't it? Now, don't forget, the next time you come to listen, don't stay outside. Right. I won't. Seen Daisy talking to the water again. Where? On the landing outside his room. Playing this morning, the shaving water you took him up wasn't hot. Shaving water? It was early morning cup of tea. Boy, talking to Mr. Angelos. So. I say so. But me, sir, never mind. A gentleman's a gentleman. He was probably only passing the time of day. Oh, very interesting man. Oh, is he? Oh, well, on second thoughts, I think you'd better sleep with your mother downstairs, and I'll have your room. Oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous time. nothing. I've been a lodger myself. He sounds all right. Oh, he is. Mother likes him, too. Can he speak English well? 
How do you do? Hello. <laughs> You're very brave to be sitting in the park at this time of year. We're just having our lunch. Mm. Let's share with my friend. How do you do? I expect it's the last of the summer we'll get this year. Mm. Better than sitting in the stuffy happy. Well, I suppose I'd better be pushing off. Don't be late on the switch, you. Oh, don't go, Brad. Now, I've got to see a girl about a cat. Goodbye. We were talking about you when you came along. About me? What were you saying? All the usual things. Trying to describe you. And how did you describe me? Well, different somehow. Different to us. Different in what way? Oh, you know. You can see us. Ordinary people. Doing ordinary things all the year long. Nothing much to look forward to. Well, what have I to look forward to? Well, everything. You can see the world. You can go where you want to. I believe she's a kind of attractive fellow whom girls like. He leads them on a bit, and when he gets them alone, he lifts them up while the police are looking for an escape lunatic. I interest you as a man. Of course you do. I told you you were different. No, no, it's you who are different. You are young and kind. You know, those two things do not always go together. Would it bore you very much? I mean, my room sometimes. You know, it helps to take my mind off things. What sort of thing? Oh, I cannot tell you that. Ever. I hate to see you sad. Oh, but I'm not sad when I'm with you. No, I'm so sad. <laughs> I can't think why you came to England. Well, you see, I was very unhappy in my own country. And then my parents suffered a very great grief. Well, I thought it was best to get away from all that sort of thing. You don't think about these things, too? No, of course I don't. I knew you didn't know anything about it. Just now you said I did. I didn't. I asked him to do. Then I saw the silly question I'd ask. To me? No. Who was it played that the coupon to buy it with? He must have been very sad when he wrote that. Oh, must be. I think someone else is very sad. Does music make him sad? It's not so. It's... Oh, everything. Get fond of people and things, and suddenly they go away. It's all finished. What do you mean? Don't you know what I mean? Of course, I do. Listen. If things had been different, there might have been something very beautiful, very happy for you and me. But. Oh. oh don't, don't, please, don't look at me. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't you know that I'm longing to take you in my arms? Don't you know that in all this silly world there is only one who is interested in that is you? Then you do. Oh, no, forget what I said. I've no right. No, no, I don't like having that spirit with him. Get him off, then he'll get a shot. Well, if you know so much about it, come and do it yourself. No, oh, all right. Mind your head. You're a bit late, aren't you? Please, 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 don't look at me. Go away from me. Stay away from me. Don't ever be alone with me. Don't say things like that. You've been so kind of sweet. No. No. Don't be unhappy, please. Oh, please, don't be unhappy. I can't bear 
<laughs> that is better than... It's something frightening me, isn't it? Yes. Something that you can't tell me. So I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what it is. Why, you didn't tell me. I don't want to know. I only want you to feel that... I just don't care what it is. Whatever you are. Whatever you've done. I don't care. It makes no difference. I trust you. Really, I do. You trust me. And whatever I've done, whatever you may find out, you won't change. No. Oh, why should I try something that is too strong for you? <gasps> Hello, Mr. Bunting. Yes. Oh, what's up with the light? Oh, the missus has gotten used them. Where's the fuse box? I'll fix it. Down the kitchen. Hello, Ma. What you been doing with the light? That darkness, sadly, it frightened you, didn't it? Not really. Oh, I'm so happy. You've changed everything for me so much. I know there's a marvelous part of tomorrow. We might go to that, and then, and then we could walk back through the farm. Oh, I love you. Quite right. Yes. See, what a wonderful isn't he, Mark? I only wish I'd been brought up to a trade. Have you had your job? No, oh, for now. What with this taxation, nobody wants a butler nowadays. Oh, well, you're quite a handyman, Joe. No, I wish my boss thought as much of me as you two do. Oh, sorry. You know, I believe the police are on the wrong tack about these murders. They're working on the theory that it's a foreign. They've issued a description of the wanted man. Oh, what's it supposed to be like, Joe? What's it supposed to be like? Hello? Here again. Yes, Daisy. I thought perhaps you'd like to come round to the... Sorry. I'm stuck. I've got to make glad with me, though. What's up with Daisy lately? Oh, she's seen too much letters for him, you know. Who's it? Very nice gentleman from the continent. I hate foreigners. Yes, Daisy. 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 Well, Mrs. Bunton? I was just coming up to see where your supper sir. Yes, yes, I've been in. You're never going out in a nice little piece of coat. And the fog is something awful. It can't see a yard here, don't it? The weather does not affect me at all, Mrs. Bunton. It's very nice of you to be so concerned about my mood. But I like to be left alone. And I cannot stay in this house if I am watched and uh, tied on. Nobody's spying on you, sir. I've done the best you can by yourself. Yes, I'm sure you have. I'm, I'm sorry. I see. Forget what I said. Good night. Looking at Ellen. George, he's gone out. You can have to go out and not like this. Well, it's no business of ours. Oh, no. Nobody'd go out unless they had something special to go out for. Same as I have. Where are you going to? Just around the corner. What for? Oh, get me in paper. Now look sharp back. Right out. Don't be long, George. Put on your muffler and coat. Right out.
What are you to telephone, Ma? Hello, hello. Uh, luggage, 4,000. Hello, Mario, you? There's your right. Oh, yes, I saw going to Lido with Dad, and on the way back, I ran into this thing. Uh, uh, Miss, Mr. Mitchell, Joe Martin here. Hey, what's that? Oh. Uh, that's you, Bob, Joe here. Got a pencil? Ha-ha, <laughs> but it's not your own. Listen, just left scene of New Avenger murder, oh. just inside Park Gate. Oh. Well-dressed woman wearing white fur, gash across throat, head almost severed. Ah, uh, I was the first press man on the spot. And when I got there, I found a wound, still oozing blood. Woman not yet identified. Got all that? Snap it in, Bob, before the others get it. What's all the fuss about? Can you make it a special lunch edition? Good. Yeah. So long. Mm, Mr. B. The most horrible sight I've ever seen. Just around the corner this time. Empty, you all being upset. Oh, journalist, you going to Oh, this wasn't like anything I've ever seen before. You see, this time I was one of the first there. Oh, this fairly made me sick. It was awful. What you really did? Oh, don't talk about it. What you look like, huh? Oh, her, her throat has slipped from ear to ear. <laughs> What's up, Ma? Again, the police could find no clue. Nine million people in London at the mercy of some phantom thieves. Phantom thieves? Put that down. It's like the vampires of southern Europe who used to suck the blood of their victims in the graveyard by night and never could be seen by day. The police have brought a bit of it to England, sir. So I hear. Chief of police from Zagreb. By dad, it beats me. Well, I must get out of the house. See that Joe Martin's on the scene of the crime first thing tomorrow morning. Who belongs to you? I wish we had here our criminologist. I'll arrange for you to see the body at the mortuary. I should like that very much. Excuse me, Mr. Rivera. What do you want? I'm the special representative of the Evening Sun. Now, I wonder if you will give me your latest opinion now that you... No, like... I have nothing to say. But the English public will be very interested in anything that you might be able to... I cannot speak. But your English is very good. Uh, Constable. Constable. Will you move away, please? No, I shan't tell you again. I don't think I should let you go to work today. Oh, you wouldn't get with a sack, would you? But it's such a silly thing to be doing all day, talking to hundreds of people you don't know. That's <laughs> yes, isn't it? I never thought about it like that. Oh, by the way, what will your young man say if you're going to this concert tonight? Won't he object? I don't care if he does. Anyway, it's much keen on his job than he is on me. He is, and he is very, very stupid. Morning, Mr. B. Can I use your phone again? Oh, we're well, not a telephone exchange, you know. Oh, I don't know you, sir. See the latest edition? Anything fresh? No. Luggage, 4,000. <whistles> Can't get a word out of him anyway. Oh. The chief of police is out there. What? Oh, they brought him over, haven't they? Mm. Hello, Mr. Mitchell, please. Hello, is that you, Bob? Got a pencil? When interviewed this morning, Mr. Rabinovich told our representative with the utmost certainty that, in his opinion, it would merely be a matter of hours before the murderer was arrested. You know, I feel very guilty about persuading you to come without your mother's wishes, but you'll enjoy it. I know I shall. I don't know what I need from other people, is she? After all, if you never get married and I go out with the other people, she wants to be bothered about her mother's comfort. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, right. Why are you so absolutely uncomfortable? I feel like killing the man who owned this meat. Just thank you, Jerry, for your patience. I can just see you What are you doing up here? I was talking to Sandra. Never get out of the office. Now, look here, Daisy. Do stop looking at me. Oh. Won't you introduce me? Martin, Sandra. How do you do? Well, perhaps you don't. How do you do? I want to talk to you guys. Oh, Have you arranged to go out with him? You mind your own business. Well, you're not going, see? Come here, Daisy.
woman was wearing a white top of hair. That girl's crazy. The body was found within 50 yards of the park gate. I can't do anything with her lately. It's estimated that the crime was committed within three minutes of the finding of the body. I don't see there any influence. I'll you by the police for a man who may want to question in connection with these atrocities. She's not gone on that chap upstairs by any chance. Age is approximately 30, slight build, height 5 foot 10. Complexion dark, clean shaven, a foreign appearance. Sometimes carries black bags such as used for holding musical instruments. Real name Stephen Obelisk, but probably using an alias. Read that again, Bunting. Yes, sir. Read it again. Uh, you know, I heard uh, the Stravinsky name to be said that this is based off the literary the foundation of all <laughs> <laughs> And then you lean over the edge of a boat and you can you can pick the stars out of the water. That's been a lot of use tonight. What's this? You haven't even opened it. No. But you know, sometimes I like to follow the with the stars. And sometimes I like to follow the stars. Have you ever seen these better? The Sunday, the fellow's no comparison, the 50s. Oh, but much the best. Oh, this makes me feel a very rich man. Why? Well, being allowed to wander in all these beautiful parks that were built by kings for their ladies. <laughs> yeah, but now they belong to the people. To lovers who have no place, no palaces that they may sit and talk. I'm sorry we can't give you a palace. We try to make you comfortable, though. Oh, comfortable? <laughs> That's not it. Your mother seems to hate me to talk to you now. What happened to Daisy? She's late. I've never had either. No, just clear it. George, you've had enough. No, Ma, it's only the bottom of the bottle. It's nice to up in the train to not draw my story. Ah, no, we should have heard her come in. Don't see. I like the fog. You like the fog? Yes, it's strange. One can feel alone. You can almost hear the stillness. Oh, I love the night. One can escape from oneself. Well, I thought you'd come home this way. What do you think you're doing? Oh, it's you. Life is full of pleasant surprises. I wasn't talking to you. No? I couldn't believe that you were talking to an English lady like that. Oh, shut up, nasty foreigner. Joe! Who do you think you are, talking like that? You're coming home with me. Oh, no, I'm not. Mr. Angelo's taking me home. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. What's he got to do with you, I'd like to know? Joe, I think you'd better go with him. After all, he'll treat you just like a brother. Oh, well, if you put it like that, Good night. Good night. And try to dream of the fifth symptom. 
Get back to your own country. Not yet. you been? Oh, we've been that worried to know what has happened to you. Oh, you ought to know better than to keep out at this time of night. You're lucky to have back at all. Good night, Mrs. Dudley. You know, there are so many suspicious characters about him. He's quite recognized. My sir. Dirty night, sir. Yeah. I've been wondering about your past, and I nearly got lost. What's your handkerchief, sir? Mine? Um, oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George. Yes, Is that the lodger came in with you? George! Like it, 4,000. Are you certain, Mr. Bunding? Hiding his face, was he? He dropped his handkerchief and you picked it up. Yes. My hand was soaked with blood. Your hand was soaked in blood. His hand was soaked in blood. Your officers from Scotland Yard, what's your name? George Bunting. You have a lodger here known as Stefan Oberlich, called Angelo. Yes. Is he upstairs? Yes. Right. Back door, front door. You stay here. Uh, Show us his room. Come along. from Scotland Yard. I have a warrant for your arrest on a charge of willful murder. Murder? I warn you that anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be used in evidence. But who have I a murder? You'll find out about that at the station. Oh. Come along. Be quick. Um, 
Good. Okay. Special edition. Very good, sir. Hello there. Number, please. Number, please. What? 
to where you, you look like. I'm sorry. Mission. Mission. That's why. 
That's why I had to, I had to come here and try to find you before they hurt you. <laughs> They can't hurt you now. They can't hurt you now. 